Let's begin our configuration with CAS, CAS, Channel Associated Signaling. Remember, this is where we're going to be doing robbed bit signaling on a T1. We're not going to be using a channel just for signaling information. Here's how we might set this up. First of all, let's see what sort of T1 port or T1 controller that we have on this router. We can do a show diag, and by the way, I'm doing this on a 2811 ISR router. And as we scroll down, we should be able to see our T1 hardware. Here it is. We have a VWIC 1 MFT T1. That's a voice WAN interface card, one multiflex trunk, T1. And if we scroll up, we see it's in WIC slot 0. So our controller identifier is going to be 0 slash 0 slash 0. This is plugged in not to a network module. It's plugged into one of the slots on the back of the 2811. And you just need to be familiar with how the numbering works on your router platform. But let's get started by going into global configuration mode. And let's configure this controller. Let's say controller T1 0 slash 0 slash 0. And remember some of the parameters we talked about configuring, like line coding? If we say line code and give some context sensitive help. We see those two options we discussed earlier, AMI and B8ZS. We mentioned in the real world we're probably going to be using B8ZS. Let's configure that. We also talked about framing. Framing, we could do extended super framing or super framing. And in the real world, that's almost always ESF, extended super framing. Something that we didn't explicitly mention, but we'll mention it now, is where do we get the clock? This is, after all, a synchronous circuit. Where do we get the clock, the metronome, if you will, that says when one bit stops and the other bit starts? Typically, we want to get that from the service provider or from the line. So we could say clock source line. Now that we've configured those basic parameters for the T1, let's define a couple of DS0 groups. This is where we can group together different channels inside of this 24 channel T1 circuit. Let's say for example we want to take the first eight channels and have those first eight channels act like FXS loop start ports. Here's how we could do that. We could say DS0 group and we give a number in the range of 0 through 23. I'll say 0 and we'll say that for time slots 1 through 8 I want these eight time slots to act as FXS loop start ports. Which brings up the question, how does this work? Loop start, we talked about that in a previous video, loop start detects that we've gone off hook because loop current starts to flow over the tip and ring circuits. But this is a digital circuit. How do we do loop start signaling on a digital circuit? Well, the missing piece that we haven't discussed is something called a channel bank. A channel bank can accept a T1 into one of its interfaces, and it breaks out the T1 into its 24 constituent channels. In other words, it breaks those 24 digital channels out into 24 analog channels. And if we have an analog channel that can detect that loop current going out to a phone, for example, when loop current is detected on that port, on that channel bank, that channel bank can then set a bit. Remember the A, B, C, and D signaling bits? It can set a bit to indicate that the phone on this channel has gone off hook. So we don't see loop current obviously on a T1 port, but we do see that A, B, C, and or D bit to indicate the state of the device connected to the channel via a channel bank. Now, let's do one more. Let's say DS0 group 1 time slots, let's do the next 8, 9 through 16. We'll make these FXO loop start ports. Let's administratively bring up the controller. And if we give it just a few seconds, we should see, as we do now, these virtual voice ports being created. In fact, let's take a look at what voice ports our router now knows about. Let's do a show voice port summary and we see these 16 channels that we've defined under the channel column but I want you to notice the port identifier the first eight channels we said belong to DS0 group 0 how do we reference that when we create a dial period and we say to get to this phone number go out of this port well this port is going to be identified as 0 slash 0 slash 0 
colon zero. The zero slash zero slash zero, that's the T1 controller's identifier. And after the colon, the zero, that's the DS0 group number. And when we say go to this port, it now has eight different channels it can pick from. That's if we want an FXS port. If we want an FXO port, we can say go out of port 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 1. Again, the 1 indicates DS0 group 1 that we created. That's how we can set up channel associated signaling on a T1. And I'm going to take a few moments here and get rid of this configuration and get us ready for a common channel signaling demonstration. So we'll see you back after I do that in just a few seconds.